The Braden Scale, assessing the risk of developing pressure ulcers. Reduced activity and prolonged bed rest that often accompany spinal cord injury can lead to development of pressure ulcers. The Braden Scale is widely used for assessing pressure ulcer risk. It has been validated for use with people with spinal cord injuries. Use of a pressure ulcer risk tool is an element of best clinical practice in a treatment plan to prevent pressure ulcers from developing. It is also required for full accreditation in many hospital systems. Ongoing assessment improves the accuracy and the predictive ability of the Braden Scale. A Braden assessment should be completed when a patient is admitted to hospital or has a change in medical status. A Braden assessment is simple for both provider and patient to complete. No special equipment or activities are required to perform the assessment. The information on each of the subscales is obtained from client interview, observation, or chart abstraction, and typically can be completed in 10 minutes. The Braden Scale is a 23-point instrument composed of six subscales. These are sensory perception, the level of consciousness of a patient and their ability to sense and react to pain related to pressure, moisture, Excessive and continuous skin moisture can pose a risk to the integrity of the skin. Activity. Very little or no activity can cause decreased muscle mass and tissue breakdown. Mobility. This category looks at the capability of a client to adjust their body position independently. It assesses the physical ability to move and can also involve the client's willingness to move. Nutrition. Eating only portions of meals or having imbalanced nutrition can indicate an increased risk for tissue breakdown. Friction and shear. The amount of assistance a client needs to move and the degree of sliding on beds or chairs can affect friction. Shear occurs when skin and bone move in the opposite direction of the support surface. Each of the six subscales includes three or four levels with a key concept description and one or two phrases or sentences describing its qualifying attributes. For example, in the subscale activity, the lowest score, one, is given when a patient is bedfast, a two for chairfast, a three for walks occasionally, and a four for walks frequently. It's important not to alter the scale by adding or deleting items or by modifying existing definitions. Any such change will result in inaccuracy. One to four points are assigned for each subscale and combined to give the final score. Total scores can range from 6 to 23. A lower score indicates higher risk of developing a pressure ulcer. Scores below 18 indicate preventive measures must be taken to maintain skin integrity. Even with lower risk individuals, preventive measures should always be considered. It is recommended that reassessment be completed for all patients receiving scores of 18 or less. These reassessments should be performed in acute settings every 24 hours or as patient condition changes. In long-term care, Reassess weekly for four weeks, then assess quarterly, or as the resident's condition changes. Home care and community clients may be reassessed quarterly or with each caregiver visit. The risk assessment is ineffective if no action is taken when at-risk individuals are identified. There are action recommendations that can be considered and help direct practice with each Braden subscale. These can help direct clinicians to what specific preventive measures they should take. Examples of best practice prevention include inspection of skin, pressure relief, and appropriate seating equipment. The Braden Scale is widely used and understood across many healthcare disciplines, allowing common communication between practitioners. For more information, see the Braden Risk Assessment and Interventions Flow Sheet. To use the Braden Scale effectively and score it appropriately, the Braden website has a video, CD, and case studies that provide further details on scoring and using this scale in clinical practice. <laughs>